Welcome to the Master Dealmaker's Secrets Podcast. And now, here's sales growth strategist, John Blake. Welcome to Master Dealmaker Secrets. I'm John Blake. This is episode 119, and today we're going to be talking about five ways that you can get out of a sales slump. Pretty pumped to be bringing you this information. I think it will be incredibly valuable to you because everybody goes through a slump. If you're not or have not experienced a slump, there's one coming. (laughs) Also, if uh, you are managing a team of salespeople, then there's probably somebody who you've got working for you who's probably going to experience a slump at some point as well. So I've coached myself out of a few slumps and I've coached a lot of the team members that I work with out of slumps as well. So um, yeah, pumped to be talking about that. But before we do that, if you have got leads in your funnel and you want to convert more of those, head over to johnblakeaudio.com and grab your free audio training where I show you the exact strategy that you can use to double sales with existing leads in your pipeline. This is the same strategy that I teach all of my Arise Mastermind clients when they first start with me. It will give you consistent results. You can do it yourself. You can also teach it to somebody and they can do it for you and they'll get the same result. So head over to johnblakeaudio.com. Not only will you get the audio training, you'll also get the PDF guide that gives you the actual scripts, the word for word scripts, what to right in your emails, what to say when you ring them up on the phone, when, what to say when you get a voicemail message, whether to leave a voicemail message or not to leave a voicemail message, what to say when you get through, all of that, it's all there. It will cover you for 90 days. And in most cases, you'll either get a yes or a no. No is just as important an answer, if not better than a yes, because a no, in fact, a, a no, sorry, a yes is better than a no, but a no is better than a maybe because a maybe will drive you insane, a no you can move forward with. So johnblakeaudio.com, go grab it, use it, get a result, email me and tell me how great it was and uh, I'll be stoked to hear that. Righto, episode 119, how to get yourself out of a sales slump. So I have talked about this before in episode number 70, how to get out of a sales run. It was one of the most popular episodes that I ever did. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to do another one. I've done over 100 episodes. I may as well do another one on getting out of a sales slump. It happens to everybody. Uh, Certainly topical for most people. So we're going to go through each of the five things that you can do to get yourself out of a sales slump. Any one of these things can make a massive difference. And, uh, And look, if you do them, it'll work. First thing to remember is that sales slumps are are, are temporary. That's not one of the five, but I just thought I'd say that. Um, So the five things are, number one, change your mindset. The second, we'll we'll expand on these as we go, right? So change your mindset, that's the first one. Second one, revisit the basics. The third one is call past clients who love you. The fourth one is revisit sales, your success stories, people that have had a fantastic result with you. And number five is detach, detach. So we'll expand on each of those as we go. So number one, change your mindset. How do you change your mindset? Well, one of the things that you can do is listen to something positive. First thing when you wake up in the morning. So I went through a stage where first thing I would do when I wake up in the morning is because uh, quite a few num- quite a number of, um, or at least, Three mornings, I'm up at five o'clock. I go to swimming training. And uh, one of the things I was doing was like looking at email straight away. Five o'clock in the morning when I wake up. Not good. I uh, replace that with listening to something positive. So my uh, you know positive YouTube of choice, and there's, there's a whole bunch of them, but the one that I like, just because I really like the way he talks and um, I just think his stuff is just timeless, is Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn. So I would wake up and I would listen to Jim Rohn and I've been doing that pretty consistently now for a number of months and it makes a massive difference. If you listen to something positive first thing, that is a great place to start. So uh, changing your mindset, one of, the th- one of the things you can do there is listen to something positive first thing. Uh, second thing you can do, write five things that you are grateful for at the end of the day. What are five things that you are grateful for? Write those things down 
at the end of the day. You could bring it up with your kids at the dinner table. You could just write it down on a piece of paper, but make sure at the end of every day, write down five things that you are grateful for. And if you can't come up with five things, you're not trying hard enough. If you've got drinking water, clean drinking water, if you've got sewerage connected to your property, right? These are things that we take for granted, but we need to be grateful for them, right? So if you do this often enough, you will find a shift. But that's not all, right? Um, The third one is revisit your motivation. So for what it is that you're actually doing in your role, revisit your motivation. I got this one from the the Dalai Lama a number of years ago in an incredible book that he wrote or someone wrote on his behalf called The Art of Happiness. And he talks about the antidote to, um, you know, to nervousness, to uh, anxiety is to revisit your motivation for what it is that you're doing. And if you can do that, uh, you, you tend to, to get better, better posture, you know, you'll sort of stand a little bit straighter and you, you'll hold your head a bit higher. And, you know, so as an example, you know, like, what is my motivation for doing this? Well, you know, what's my motivation for doing this? Well, I want to help salespeople, I want to help business owners to get the best results possible from their marketing. I want to help them avoid a lot of the mistakes that I've made in over 30 years of of selling and I want to make sure that they get fantastic results. So that's my motivation. Yours will be different. But if you ask yourself that question, that is what you will get. So the second one is revisit the basics. So often, if you're not getting good results, it'll be because you've, you've, um, you're either not, you're not covering a particular part of your process or you're skipping over something. Go back and revisit your process, revisit the basics. There could be easily be something that you're not doing or that you're not doing as, uh, as, as well as what you pro- possibly should be. So that's number two. Uh, number three, call past clients who love you. So you will have a handful of clients that would love to hear from you that, that literally think the sun shines out of your bum. Ring them. Ring four or five of them and you will be in a totally different headspace when you actually get off the phone from them. Uh, number four is revisit success stories. So have a look at testimonials. Uh, revisit success stories. I just found out from a guy that I did some work with. Um, he coaches a whole bunch of trades type businesses and I ran a training for, for one of his programs and based on a training that I did on how to actually present a proposal to a client, one of his clients won a $1.6 million contract and he puts it down to the training that I did that showed him how to present a proposal to a client and uh, I mean, you know, for me, that's just a fantastic success story. And I'm, I only just found out about that literally 10 minutes ago because the guy, um, we just got off the phone to each other. So, um, you know, that's an example of a fantastic success story. If, I, if I'm ever feeling a little bit doubtful about what I do, I can go revisit that. That's, you know, that, that's the kind of thing that you want to go back and read through your testimonials. If you've got video testimonials, fantastic. But, you know, go back and read through your client success stories. That'll have a massive massive shift in your mindset and then the fifth is um, detach detach from the outcome so you can do this in a couple of different ways the first one is understand that you actually don't have control over the outcome you don't have control over whether someone says yes or no to you you just don't okay what you do have control over is how you present yourself how you show up the questions that you ask you can improve your results by improving what you can control. So you can control how you show up. You can control how much training you do. You can control how much you practice. You can control all of those things, but ultimately you can't control what your client does. Now, if you get good enough over, say, 100 sales presentations or sales conversations, your conversion will increase. But you don't know which ones are going to say yes and which ones are going to say no. You don't have control over that. But you can control the way that you conduct yourself in those meetings. I hope that makes sense. So that's the first part of, of, of uh, detaching. The second part is be in a state of play, right? So, so you know, have a have a you know, don't be flippant, and and but be playful. 
be playful in your approach. Don't be too serious. You know, bring a state of play to what you do because it's your it's your attitude and your enthusiasm that will rub off on people. And then the last one is, you know, rather than you know rather than playing the man, um, play the ball. And and the ball in this in this analogy is really just service. You know, be in service. Be be the be the person that's that's creating value that doesn't that isn't too concerned about about which clients come on board and which ones don't because like I say you don't have any control of that and and the, and the the more that you become aware of what you do have control over and what you don't have control of um, the, the better that you will be so provide and be in service be of service uh, that will make a massive difference so um, I Thank you for being on the podcast and uh, I will thank you for listening to the podcast and I appreciate you listening and I will talk to you on the next podcast. Thank you. You've been listening to Master Dealmaker's Secrets with John Blake. Subscribe to get more in-depth strategies to maximize your sales process with new episodes every week. And double your inquiry to sale conversion with the lead flow you already have. Go to johnblakeaudio.com for his exclusive free no-fluff audio training and companion PDF guide.